guys, how are you today? So I just have another idea for making acrylic skins. This one that I did the other day is nail polish. I know, right? I know, I'm crazy, I know, but it's so pretty. <laughs> so this is a old nonstick craft sheet I have that's obviously well loved and a bit past it. It's inside of a cookie sheet. And literally what I did is I took some nail polishes that I have here in the craft room specifically for doing this kind of thing with. They're mostly from the dollar store and things like that. I literally poured them out on here and then I moved them around while they were wet with a toothpick. I let it dry. I covered the whole thing with um, collage podge, you could use Elmer's glue, Mod Podge, whatever you have, a pretty thick coat, let that dry completely. You can still tell this is not completely dry. It's been, there's just so much thickness here. Plus, you've got this nail polish, um, which is very chemically, you know, I want to say acetone based, but that's not the right word. It's not the right chemical. Um, and it probably doesn't mix well with the uh, Elmer's glue. I will tell you that I tried something else before this and it really, really didn't work. Um, in fact, I had to lift off the craziness that came up from that with, ended up with t lifting it off with packing tape. I used um, like an acrylic varnish and it, is finally dry and I got I did get this interesting pattern which I can use as a skin um, or as a element of collage in artwork um, but it took forever to dry and there was some sort of weird chemical reaction between the nail polish and the acrylic varnish but I did get it to dry I did get it to lift the next time I used the collage podge and I worked much better so then I had the idea okay what if I tried this with an acrylic pour and made a skin? That would be really interesting if I could do that. And you would get those interesting, hopefully, cells and and textures. So we're going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to mix up some paint and we're going to do an acrylic pour on here. Hopefully I don't make too much to have it spill underneath because that's a bad thing. Um, and um, we're going to let it dry for a couple days and we'll come back and see what it looks like. That would be a fun acrylic skin. All right, I'll be back. Let me get my stuff together. Okay. So we're gonna just set this empty one aside for a minute. I have two colors of metallic paint here. And this is just a little bit of paint poured out in these little containers. I'm going to add some pouring medium because we're gonna be thinning down the paint. So before we do that, um, we wanna add some binders to the paint so that over time the paint doesn't break down and crack and all of that stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is add the pouring medium, mix it in really well until it's not lumpy. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, make sure you've got it all mixed in. We have such a little amount of paint, it shouldn't take very long. Then I'm going to add some Floetrol, um, which is from the hardware store. It's a product made to increase the flow of latex paint. I'm going to add a little bit of that in. Um, it does a similar thing to the pouring medium, um, but a little bit differently, and it is something else you can add to the paint to um, help it like flow and be and move without breaking down the properties of the paint and breaking down the binders. I'm not a chemist so I don't understand. I just know that if, when I use it it works. <laughs> Alright so mix, mix that in really well. Then you really want to have the paint runny and if you can see I don't know if you can see but that's not it just it kind of clumps off the palette knife. So that doesn't work. We really want it to flow in a stream off the palette knife. So next, this is just water, tap water, nothing special. I'm going to add a few drops at a time, mixing it in, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, 
until we get something that runs off. And the only thing I can tell you about doing this is you just have to practice and see what works for you. Use craft paint, use something inexpensive while you're practicing and figuring out what works for you. I have some black and white that's already mixed up on the side. It should be okay. It needs to be shaken, but it should be all right. That's better. Still a little bit. The Floetrol and the pouring medium will also increase the drying time of your paint. So that means it's going to take a lot le uh, longer to dry than it normally would. Which in this case while you're manipula manipulating your paint is what you want. That's better. Maybe a little too thin now. But we're going to go with it. I think I just splattered myself with paint because you know. <laughs> it's what we do, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So let's do this one. Now my black and white do not have any silicone um, oil in them at all. If you ha are familiar with watching acrylic pour videos, some people do them with, with some people do them without. Um, okay. Sorry, somebody called the house phone, which is weird. Okay, so that's just about good. So we are going to add a drop of silicone oil to these. This is treadmill oil. Just going to put one drop because this is not very much paint. And I'm only going to add it to the metallics. Then I'm going to mix them in. Mix this one in. All of these additives to the paint will aid in the kind of reaction between the colors to help you form cells and interesting patterns in the paint. Okay, so here's my white. Um, this is just pouring medium, Floetrol, acrylic paint, and water. It's been sitting for a little bit, so we want to shake it up really well. Okay, should be good. So we're going to put some of that in. This is the black. Some of the metallic, some white. We're going to build what they call a dirty pour. I mean, basically, you're putting all the colors in one cup. More white. I'm going to zoom you in. 
can you already see kind of what's happening inside that cup? Black. Turquoise. White. Copper. White, black, turquoise, white, black, Copper, Oops. okay, and some more white. Now, I am pretty sure that's way too much paint, <laughs> so I'm going to grab a little mini canvas and I need a couple of little risers these little triangle feet things you get them at Sorry, I need to zoom out. You get these at the hardware store in the paint department. And we're gonna put this a little farther apart. Yeah, there we go. Oops. Okay. So Gonna put some white around. This will help ensure that the edges get covered. So as I'm pouring this to cover the canvas, what I want to do is deliberately drip it onto the... Whoa! <laughs> Actually, look what happened. I like that. So deliberately dri drip it onto the um, nonstick craft sheet. Okay, I'm going to stop there because that is really pretty. And it's already forming cells here and here. I'm going to zoom you in a minute after I wash my hands. And we have this accidental, intentional um, skin here on the nonstick craft sheet right here that's going to make something really interesting that we'll be able to peel it off. So rather than do these pours on paper, if I do them on the nonstick craft sheet, then I have something I can use in a future project. I may need to cover them again with collage podge before I peel them off to thicken them. I love this circle right here that came. I love that so much I can't even tell you. Let me clean my hands and I'll be right back. See that? I was just going to pour some paint to get a skin and because we ended up with too much paint I got a little canvas out of it and how cute is that? I realize for some of you you may be going I don't get it. I 
think you have to have a love of abstract painting to really like acrylic pours. I'm not going to do lots of acrylic pouring tutorials on this channel because there are a million of them out there and there's a million artists out there who do them really, really well. I'll try to link a few of their channels in the description below for those of you who are interested. But that being said, it is fun to do and I like the idea of having this leftover paint from a pour that's been poured on this acrylic craft sheet that I can use as an embellishment in another project, probably a journal page. I'm gonna be doing one of those pretty soon with these after they're dry. If you're interested in seeing what I do with them on a journal page, follow me on social media. All of my social media links, my Facebook groups I'm part of, my website, everything else is in my Linktree link. The Linktree link is in the description below. Click it, you'll get all the links, you'll get the whole list of every place that I am on the internet. So, I hope you give it a try. Look around your studio, see what you have, old nail polish, acrylic paint. You know, think about how you can make your own unique embellishments, little bits and pieces and things that you can use in a page. Here, here's one, let me zoom out a bit. Oops, that's the wrong way. Here's one I did just today with bits and pieces that I have that had the word dream, some paint, some writing, uh, a little bit of doodling, and a sticker I had from a friend, KP over at Rubber Moon. And so you don't have to have super complicated things to make really interesting journal pages. That's an old leaf from a walk. Some old pieces of paper, a little bit of stenciling, and some washi tape. So I want to make some of these acrylic skins and nail polish skins to use on pages like that. I can't wait to give it a try. I hope you do too. Let me know what you come up with. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, put them down in below underneath the video. I'd love to see them. And uh, that's it for today. Check out those Linktree links. Check out my Etsy shop. If you want to support the free content on this channel, you can go um, peruse my wish list or my um, tip jar. And uh, all of that is very much appreciated. That's it for today. The most important thing is to go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.